citizen pays his fair share of taxes. Amen. The Bible says there was a certain widow woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. Her, her husband was a preacher, a prophet. Amen. Her husband served God. Um, in this scripture it says in verse 1, there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha. She said, your servant my husband is dead. And you know that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor 
is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. In a sense, what's happened is the husband dies and he leaves the family in debt. Amen. And the debt is so substantial that the woman is not able to pay the creditors that her husband owed. Amen. Amen. The creditors say, okay, since you don't have the money that your husband owed us, thank you so much, evangelist. If you don't have the money that your husband owed us, what we're going to do, we're going to take your two sons and we're going to work the money off of them. Amen. 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 It says, the bondman is coming to take away my sons to serve, to pay off my husband's debts. She tells this to the prophet. Amen. Amen. She says, what can I do, prophet? Amen. The woman is literally in a position, this is my first point, amen, where she has nothing left. <laughs> now, I know many of you are familiar with being in that position, amen. But it's something when you're driving down the road and you look at the gas needle and it's leaning almost past E. <laughs> when there's almost nothing left. I hope I get somebody up this morning. Amen. Amen. When you look in the refrigerator and you have mouths to feed and you look in there and you see your bottle of baking soda and your ice water because there's nothing left. Amen. Amen. You go to the bank account. <laughs> you pull up Amen. <laughs> Uh, you pull up your account balance because there's a need in the house. But when you look at the account balance, there seems to be nothing left. Amen. But not only when it comes to our physical needs, there are some things that we can go through in life. Amen. That it, it taxes the energy and the drive out of you. Amen. You may start out happy in the morning. But by the time you put in eight hours dealing with foolish people, it can tax your goodness. It can tax your joy. It can pull away from you till you get to the point where you might say, listen, you're getting on my last nerve. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You're getting on my last nerve. I don't have anything left. Amen. It's a peculiar circumstance to find yourself in when there's absolutely nothing left. And it seems like for the believer, that's the, that's the time when we have a tendency to come to God. Amen? And so it could possibly be that God allows us to fall into positions and circumstances where we're at our last. Because when we have the abundance and the much, we might not be inclined as much to go after God. Amen. But the woman's husband served God. Amen. But it didn't say that she served God. She says, Prophet, you know my husband loved the Lord and that he served faithfully. And now I feel that the church or, or, or the prophets owe us something because he did all of that work for God. But he didn't leave us anything but debt. Can I get a witness up in here? Uh, in verse 2, Elijah said unto her, <clears throat> What shall I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. She said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Amen. You may feel like you're down to your last. And I'm not necessarily talking about financial means, even though God cares about those things too. Amen. But I'm talking about you might be getting down to the last of the currency that gives you a reason to wake up in the morning and keep going. Can I get a witness up in here? And so he says, what do you have left? She says, I don't really have anything. He said, but she said, after I looked around for a little bit, I noticed I did have a little bit of oil left in a pot. Hallelujah. Um, God will always give us something to work with. You might not have many friends, uh, and they might not even ring your phone unless they need something from you. 
but you might just be out somewhere and you see somebody you hadn't seen in a long time and they just happen to have the right thing to say to you when you were at your feeling at your worst. Can I get a witness in here? And that one word may be able to carry you over until God turns the circumstance around. God will always leave us something to work with. There's something in your house. I have a little oil prophet that he said, go and borrow vessels abroad of all of your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Can I translate that? He says, go to everybody in your neighborhood and I want you to borrow as many vessels as you can. Don't, don't borrow a few vessels but I want you to borrow the biggest vessels you can find, the most you can find. Bring all those vessels into your house because God is getting ready to do something. Amen. Well, it doesn't really make sense to bring in a lot of empty vessels. I've already got empty vessels. I got an empty um, gas tank. I got an empty refrigerator. I got an empty this, an empty that. Why would I want to bring more empty stuff into my house? You see, it's really not about what's the contents inside of the vessels. It's about the potential for the space. You're, you're expanding your capacity to receive. Oh, I hope y'all hear me this morning. Amen. You might not have much love left in your heart. Your love might be on E. Well. But if you can find a way to say, I'm not going to treat everybody bad because this person is treating me bad. You expand your capacity to love past your circumstances. God is getting ready to feel like he's never done before. But she had to do something that seems absolutely foolish. Because with men, it won't make sense. But with God, it's a faith thing. She had no reason to listen to what the prophet said. She had no reason to. But she didn't have anything to lose either. He says, go and borrow all the vessels you can. And bring them in your house. Verse 4, then he gives another instruction. When you come into your house, shut the door upon you and upon your sons. Can I tell you what that means there? That means that what goes on in your house is your business. Oh, I wish I had a prayer church this morning. Amen. Amen. He says, when you go in, what I'm going to do for you is none of their business. You shut the door. Amen. Where it's going to be you, me, and the issue. And I'm going to deal with it. Amen. You have to be careful who you open your doors to. Because everybody's intentions are not pure. Everybody's not trying to help you. Amen. Shut the door upon you and your sons. And what I want you to do, that little, that little jar of oil that you do have, begin to pour it into all the vessels and you shall set aside that which is full. He says, this little oil you do have, when you begin to pour it, it's going to start to fill up the vessels. And once the vessel is full, move it to the side and fill the next vessel. In verse 5, so she went from him and shut the door her upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out amen you shut your door you told god what you have left you've put it all in his hands amen you've closed everybody else out because they couldn't help you anyway they saw you struggling, they saw you crying, they saw you hungry, they saw you going through. And if they knew she was starving, I'm sure they knew the creditors were coming to take her sons, amen. But she stopped worrying about them and she just put her faith on the line and decided to give God a shot at it, amen. So she closes her door and something very funny happens. She begins to pour out of the little vessel. And she begins to fill up jar after jar 
after jar after jar after jar until she looked around and said, son, bring me another vessel. And the son says, mother, there aren't any more vessels to bring. All of the jars are full. And she went, she said, prophet, I followed the word that you gave me. And what I found out is that God is a God of more than enough. Because when I began to pour, not only did it fill up the vessel that I did have, but it began to run over the sides because I didn't have any more vessels to pour into. She expanded her capacity to receive from God. Well, what are you talking about? I don't have any vessels. What I mean for you to do today, believer, is to open the capacity of your expectation. That means that if you got a little bit, God can take it and do the most with it. Amen. We fail when we stop believing, not in our own ability, but in God's ability. Because we look at it and we say, well, there's no way that this can be fixed. No, not in the natural sense. But you're dealing with a supernatural God. He don't need your way to do it. He don't need anybody else's permission to do it. He just does it how he wants to do it. Amen? Amen. So somebody walk up to you and say, listen, God just told me to bless you. You came to church on faith and didn't have any gas in your car. But by the time you leave, you got gas in the car and something to get something to eat with. Can I get a witness up here? You see, but then that's the little bit that we expected from God. What would happen if I expected him to pay off the, all the bills for the month? If I believe for gas money, God will give me gas money. If the widow woman had went out and borrowed one vessel, that's all she would have got was one jar of oil. But her need was great. So he said, don't borrow a few. Borrow as many as you can find. And then they shut the door. Amen. Amen. I hope that she had enough sense to fill every single room, every corner, every nook with a vessel. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the thing, he says, go and sell the oil, pay off the creditors, and you and your children live the rest of your life off the rest. Amen. She had nothing. She had nothing. And God is no respecter of persons. She didn't even pray to God. She went to the preacher and said, Preacher, I got a problem. Preacher gave her the word of God. All she did was do it. And she did it because she was on empty. <laughs> so you might be on empty because God is getting ready to bless you. Yes, sir. But you have to begin where my mind became closed to possibilities. As hard as it might be to hope again. Because it's hard to hope again. And I'm finished. Amen. Amen. It's, it, it, it hurts when you have an expectation and then it fails. Or if you're waiting on something and it fails. Or if you believe in something and then it fails. Because it begins to close that little space where you really don't want to believe it anymore. But when you put God in the picture, amen. amen. The Bible says, eye hasn't seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. There's no limit in God. We have limitations. We run out of space. We run out of capacity. But think a little bigger. Expect a little bit. Pray a little bigger. Amen? Amen. Pray a little. What do you have to lose? Pray a little bigger. Amen? I'm finished. That's your feet this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope I helped somebody this morning. Amen? I know I helped myself. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Because you can't tell what a person's going through by looking at them. You don't know. You don't know. And so we just trust, amen, that, 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 that we have enough wisdom that whatever it is, we put it in God's hands. 
Because what we can't handle, he can he, he he can do wonders with it. A little jar of oil. A little jar of oil. From nothing to abundance overnight. God can do that thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you this day, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you love us. We thank you that you care for us, oh God. Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, that you have a plan for our lives, oh God. God, we thank you for the spirit of expectancy, God. Lord, we know that you have every intention to bless us, God, to care for us, to keep us, God, to heal us, oh God. But Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, that anything that would separate us from you, oh God, forgive us of our sins, oh God, forgive us of our trespass, oh God. Lord, forgive us of our unforgiveness, oh God. God, help us to forgive those who trespass against us, oh Lord, so that our blessing will not be blocked, Lord. For you say, God, that if we don't forgive others, that you won't forgive us, oh God. So, God, those things, we let them go right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, you promised in your word that you would open the windows of heaven and provide a blessing that we do not have room enough to receive. So we thank you today, Father God, for every blessing, God. God, for every promise that you made, for every promise that you're going to keep, oh God. For you said that your word shall not return void, but it shall fulfill the purpose until you have sent it. We love you today, Father, and we trust you with our lives in all things, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.